Okay, well, I've said it before and I will say it again. It's great to be the king, isn't it? <laughs> it is, Bonnie. It is great to be the king of sparkle. That's what I feel the sequel is. It's all sparkle and uh, I imagined it. Well, I have to ask you this because I am pretty sure when you started, you know, when you actually sat down to write this script, you were thinking a lot about the fans in mind. Because the last time I spoke to you, my first complaint was, why isn't Aiden in the, in the first film? Here we go. He's here. <laughs> I always sit down to write Sex and the City, and the first thought is, and I'm not kidding, I don't know if it's healthy, I don't know if it's a people-pleasing thing, I always think, what does the audience want? Like, what would be a surprise? What would be needed? And I sat down to write this, and it was in an economic downturn, and everybody was sort of pulling it all in, and everybody was a little bit unsure, and I thought, okay, my job is to go the other way, to blow it up, have fun. It's a movie. That's what the movies are for, to get away. Leave your problems for two some hours and, and go have a good time. And the secret weapon in this movie is Aiden. And I knew that there is still a gigantic emotional attachment to Aiden. And I didn't use him in the first one because I felt it was I, want, I thought about it, but I thought, no, no, he's moved on. And that's what we dare to do in Sex and the City. We sort of surprise you every now and then. Just he's gone, and then all of a sudden, here he is. And the movie's really about Carrie's evolution from who she was to who she is to who she's going to be. And as I realize she's going to be looking at who she was and looking at her past, who's in her past but Aiden? And for the audience, it's either Aiden or Mr. Big. It's clear, right down the middle. Aiden, Mr. Big, so I thought here he is again. Mm -hmm. And John Corbett is dreamy and fantastic to work with. Yeah, was it hard getting him back? Uh, I was a little nervous because I had to call him. And he said to me, I'd love to do it. I tell you, I was a little hurt I wasn't in the first one. I said I had a plan up my sleeve. Not that I was thinking there was going to be a sequel. I didn't. I just thought, you can't use Aiden well. There's not enough room. Yeah, exactly. Now, what I also love, I mean, you're such a fantastic writer. And Thank there's you. so many great one-liners in this Thank movie. Thank you. Like, oh, the I Jude Law it, line. I'm sorry. Like, I, I wanted it to be funny. I wanted to hear laughter in the theater. The first movie felt to me like I wanted it to be emotional and sad and people crying for her in the dark and in feeling that pain because they missed it and it's heartbreak. And that's fun in the movies, too. This one, I wanted to be a lot of laughs. And yet still, there's a nice... Emotion. Oh, big time. But what, what I love so much is because, well, maybe because I'm the same age as these women, but they're really embracing who they are now. They're not trying to be 25 years old again. They're dealing with the issues that so many of us can relate to. How on earth do you know this stuff so well? Well, first of all, I know the characters well. So I've been writing the characters since the series began. So I know the characters. So they're already in my head, and I understand where they've been. So as a writer, and my only rule with Sex in the City really is don't repeat. So if I have that rule, I have to move them forward. And then because I live in the world with women all around me, and because women express their feelings, and even when they don't express them, I feel their feelings, and I start looking around and I say, okay, all the Charlottes, what are they feeling? What do I see? What are my sisters like? What are my friends like? What are the Carries feeling? What am I like in a relationship now after these years? You know, what part of me is interested in a problem? Like, how do you become a couple? after you've been single for so long. And then the menopause thing for Samantha, I just love the idea that the word is, the word society has come up with is, you're going through the change. And Samantha don't want to change. And I love that she's the fierce lion who's gonna sort of fight this and go all the way with it, but in a comic way. And then of course it's fun to explore Miranda who has been a work head her entire life to see what happens when she puts down her Blackberry. Yeah. It's all around you and if you're lucky to be the guy who gets to write women, it's your job to reflect them back because the audience is the thing that is making this continue. It's not a number at the box office, it's the audience wanting to relate and see their girlfriends again. Yeah, I would think at this point, um, with all you know, five of you together, that you're finishing each other's sentences. That it's, you know each other so it's well. It's almost like we're dolphins. We're like, I barely talk now. I, there's a look. We're in the we're in the middle of filming a scene in Abu Dhabi. I look over. I walk into Sarah Jessica, and I go, and you. And she goes, got it. And I come out because it's we're too busy. Someone said to me, how long does it take you to rehearse a scene? I say, twelve years. Because we've rehearsed for 12 years. So now if the script works, 
and they're ready, it goes. How is it shooting on location? You're away from New York City. You're not bombarded by the gabillions of fans that are trying to find out. First of all, let's secret. talk about the gabillions of fans. Yeah, let's. And I think it, that's an accurate number, gabillion. When we shot in front of Bergdorf's, the, the, the first time you see the four girls is always like, you know, release the Kraken, here they come. People don't quite know what to do. And it's thrilling. It is the most respectful mob I've ever seen. They, it's all love. So they're very quiet when I say action, they shut up. When I say cut, they applaud. And so that's one side of it. And then we go all the way over to Morocco where it's us, the dunes, and the camels. And silence. And that's a whole other flip side. So it really became like, like when we started the series, nobody knew what we were doing on the street. So even in Morocco, there's an awareness of sex in the city, but it's not a familiarity. I went hiking with Cynthia up in the mountains, and I heard one woman go, Miranda. But it was quick and subtle, not like, can I have your picture? Right. Yeah, and that must have been such a change for all of you. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. But you wouldn't want one without the other. It's nice. Suppose you gave a party and nobody came. You're filming in front of Bergdorf Goodman's. You want to turn some heads, or else maybe you shouldn't be filming. Yeah. Um, so much fun stuff in this film, but, you know, sticking four women in some nice clothing on a camel, that's mean. <laughs> It is mean. Putting those ladies on a camel is mean. Let me continue how mean it is. With no crew, umbrellas, sunblock, or assistance around them because I didn't want footprints on the camels. So you just keep pulling back and you see they're basically on the Lawrence of Arabia desert dunes alone. But they had great sports. You know who were not such great sports? Those bitchy camels. And I imported them. I said, I want no mangy camels. So we got some blonde show camels. They had to have two. Yeah. Um, take, and, and yeah, and then bringing all the clothes there. And oh, I always... it's, it's extravagant. It's, it's the Ringling Barnum and Pat Bailey, sir. Pat Field Circus. I mean, the scarves, the hats, the clothes. And what I love about the costumes in the Middle Eastern part of the movie is they're undefinable. It's not, oh, she's wearing that label. It's Pat inventing a way for these girls to be modest yet fashionable in a, in a different culture. It's really fun. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally hope you have three rolling around in your brain, but you know, at the end of three the day... Three thoughts, you mean. Three thoughts three, and three brain Sex cells. in the City, three. But okay, if, three brain cells know, are sure. All good things have to come to an end eventually. Will it be really sad when you have to say goodbye to these girls? You know, the fun thing is I've already said goodbye to these girls once. I, Sarah Jessica and I ended the series. We were like, it's time to leave. And it was a good move because we left a little bit before everybody was ready for us to leave. So that's always very exciting. So I think if the time comes to leave, and maybe it's now, uh, we'll know it. I mean, the great thing about these characters that they still live on. I mean, you go to the movie now to see the sequel and you see 44, 43-year-old Carrie Bradshaw. You go home on... TV, you see 33-year-old Carrie Bradshaw. Whether you see 53-year-old Carrie Bradshaw, who knows? It's just as long as the stories continue and there's a something to say, that's a possibility, but it's not a reality. Yeah. So enjoy this. For sure. Well, keep writing no matter what. Oh, I thanks, love Mark. your writing. You're so great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for this. Thanks. My Thank pleasure. You. Have a great day. Thanks.